Praise the Lord. Something great is coming your way. What are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. A great hour. A wonderful hour. You will visit your people. Your people, Lord, will never be the same again in Jesus' name. The power to rise up. The power to live according to your word. And the power to walk victoriously. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray from this day, your people will never be the same again. Confirm your word in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're reading from Luke chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That's what every follower of Christ ought to say. That is the word that ought to come out of your heart through your mouth unto the Lord. I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And the man vanished into the thin air. We cannot see him anymore. He did not understand. The Lord said, you want to follow me? The birds have nests. And all the animals have their holes where they hide and lodge. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. What does that mean? He said, I don't have any permanent shed, any permanent hut, any permanent bungalow or brick and mortars here on earth, but I have mansions in heaven. I do not have the temporary. I have the permanent. I have the future. I have the eternal. The man did not understand. Because Jesus said, the son of man does not have the temporary thing here. He thought that was the end of life. That was the end of the possession of Christ. He led. He never came back again. We're going to look at the word of God together on living and walking as Christ's disciples. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, the making of a true disciple. Number two, the marks of a transformed disciple. Number three, the model of a trustworthy disciple. Number one, the making of a true disciple. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. And he says unto them, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. You cannot truly, totally, completely, entirely 
make yourself who you ought to be. In your own human strength. In your own human ability. In your own reading and learning and studying. In your own struggling. In your own trials. I will try my best. I will do my best. You cannot make yourself ultimately what you ought to be. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway led their nets and followed him. A follower is a disciple. A disciple is a follower. Follow me. They left all and they followed him. Disciples follow. Disciples of Christ follow the Lord. A true disciple will follow Christ faithfully. They'll follow him closely. They'll follow him sincerely. They'll follow him unquestioningly. They'll follow him implicitly. I want you to write that word disciple. Who is a true disciple? D, a devoted, dedicated, decisive follower. Christ is my savior. Christ is my Lord. Christ is my model. Christ is my director. Christ is my leader. Christ is my Lord. He is my shepherd. I will follow till the end. The winds may blow. The storm may rise. Whatever happens, whatever does not happen, I am a decisive, devoted, dedicated follower as a disciple. I is an incorruptible follower. A Pharisee cannot change the mind of a disciple. A Sadducee cannot change the decision of a disciple. No man, no however rich, they can bring all their money. You cannot corrupt a disciple. They know that Jesus Christ is the possessor of all the heavens and the earth. There's nothing you can bring to a disciple that will corrupt him. I'll say, okay, I will leave Jesus. Now I will follow you. Impossible. A disciple is an incorruptible follower. S, in that word disciple, is a separated, single-minded, steadfast follower. Jesus said, he that endureth to the end... The same shall be saved. They are steadfast. Temptations come, they are steadfast. Trials come, they are steadfast. Noise may be coming from here and there. They keep their eyes on their master, on the Lord, on Jesus Christ. C is a courageous follower. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I heard you are not bowing down to my idol. If you hear the sound of that music again, and you bow down and bend, come on now, bend your wheel. I am the one on seat here. Bend your wheel. Bow. Bow. If you don't bow, you don't bend, you will burn. And if you do not bend or bow, and then I make that fire hot, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand?
Nebuchadnezzar, that word, who is that God? You don't have mouth to pronounce that. Who is that God? Go ahead. If you make that fire as hot as you want to make it, we want to tell you, we are disciples of that almighty, omnipotent God. Go ahead. Make your fire. Our God. I said our God. I said our God. Who we serve, he will deliver us out of your furry furnace. Whatever happens, let it be known to you. We will not bow to your idol. Is your God smaller than Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar was angry. And so he told them, heat that furnace seven times hotter. And so they did. And they bound up, shake that Meshach and Abednego. And then he threw them into the fire. I'm sorry. The servants of Nebuchadnezzar that ever touched Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ever bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ever took up those saintly people and threw them into the fire. The fire burnt them, they died. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the robes of Nebuchadnezzar burnt up. All the robes of Nebuchadnezzar will burn off in your life. And then, and then, they rose up. And then they were walking. But they were not alone. You will not be alone. All the cords of Nebuchadnezzar, all the chains of Nebuchadnezzar, all the fetters of Nebuchadnezzar, they will burn off in your life in Jesus' name. And then Nebuchadnezzar stood up. He got the greatest surprise of his life. That earthly fire does not burn disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. He looked into the phonics. One, two, three, four. That's Shadrach there. That's Meshach. That's Abednego. Oh, oh. Who is this one? I see a fourth man. I see a fourth man. His appearance is like, tell me. The son of God. He will not leave you. He will never forsake you. In that fire, he will come there. He will walk with you. You will walk with him. That's why disciples are courageous. The next letter there is I, immovable followers. I shall not be moved. The mountains may move. The seas may roar. Enemies may rise. You have made up your mind to follow Jesus Christ. A disciple is an immovable follower. P, purposeful followers. You have a purpose. You have a goal. You have a destination. You have a destiny. Your eyes are set on that purpose, on that goal. Your mind is in heaven. Your eyes are on heaven. Your desires are in heaven. That home that he has gone to prepare, you want to be there by all means. El loyal, loving followers. Loyal. Nobody can make you unfaithful. Nobody can make you disloyal. Nobody can change your mind for a moment and say, Christ, please go aside. I want to please this man. I want to please this woman. You are loyal. That's a disciple. That's a follower. E, you are earnest. An earnest follower. 
earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's your mind. That's your heart. That's your spirit. That's your attitude. That's your passion. That's your dream. That's your food. That's everything you've got. Honestly following. Honestly obeying. Honestly defending. Honestly standing for. That same thing that Christ has put or dropped in your hand. That's the true disciple. And that's what God, that's what Christ wants to make you. He will make you. I said he will make you. Number two. The marks of a transformed disciple. That word transformed is very important. If you are a disciple now, you cannot live today as you lived yesterday. The days gone by were days without grace. This is the day of grace. Days of the past were days without Christ. This is the day you are now with Christ. You are living in Christ. You are living for Christ. Days of the past without might, without strength, without power. Today is the day of his power. Uh, yesterday, the other day was a human, natural, ordinary day. Now you are disciple. This is the day of the supernatural. A change has taken place. A transformation has taken place. You are now a transformed disciple. The marks of a transformed disciple. Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God. God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Why not be conformed to this world? Because the master Jesus, Savior, and Lord took you out of the world to conform you to the next world. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. You are now born again into the kingdom of God. The world here is earthly. The world there is heavenly. You are no more in this class down below. You are in that class up above. Jesus said they are not of the world even as I'm not of the world. That's why they are no more conformed to this world. They are transformed by the renewing of the mind. He goes on, look at that verse 2 there. That she may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. The people in the world, they live their lives according to the will of man. You are of the kingdom of God. Therefore, you live your life according to the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. What's the mark? It's total Difference from the people of the world. John chapter 13. Reading from verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you. Look up here. You have left the primary school. Now you come to the secondary school. 
in a new school, new rules operate. As you leave the secondary school, you come to university. And it's a new institution. The method of teaching is new. The method of grading is new. You are in a new class. In this new class, you operate by a new principle, a new perspective, and a new perception. Now you are a disciple of Christ. You will not act like you used to act before you were born again. We read in the papers, the people of the world, that's their kingdom. When they get angry, they fight, they kill, they destroy. Hatred is the mark of the people in the kingdom of the world. Now you're in a new kingdom, in a new class, in a new community. Because of that, a new commandment I give unto you. That she love one another. Not only that you love some, hate others. Not only that you love for a few moments, a few days, and then hate for the rest of the year. There are some people that retire from loving. They say, brother, you know, the way you are doing now, I used to do like that. I used to love everybody. I used to love even my enemies. I used to love God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. I used to love this church. That time, I used to love this church to the point that I didn't see anything to criticize. But they say, you know, everything has its time. That was a time of full-time love. Now, when you get older, you retire. I am now old. I'm now wise. I now see things I didn't see before. I have retired from love. No, it never happens in the kingdom. You don't retire from love. Loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. There's no retirement. Loving the word of God. Reading the word of God. Hearing the word of God. Drinking it like water. Eating it like food. There's no retirement. Loving heaven and loving to go to heaven. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. Happy, happy, happy will I be. There is no retirement. You keep on loving heaven, designing heaven for the rest of your life. Loving the children of God. Loving each other. There's no retirement. You keep on loving and loving and loving until you leave this world. Transparent love. Clear love. Open love. Tangible, touchable, transforming love. Some people say, you know, pastor, I'm just different. I love people, but I control myself. I don't show it. Because, you know, our people, if you show them that you love them, if you're too much of sugar or honey, they will suck you up. You know, Pastor, I won't tell other people, but I will tell you, I am rich. I don't show it. You know why I don't show it, Pastor? If I show that I have money and I have love, once to join loving people, having money together, they'll say, Brother, I have a need here. Can you give me this? So because of that, I love them, but I never show anybody. I just walk normally and I put my, you know, little, or what? 
little garment that will show that I'm a poor man, but I have it at home. I don't show it. If you have love, you will show the love. I just pretend. My brother, Christians don't pretend. If you are happy, let them know you are happy. You have love, show that you have love. There is somebody there that needs your smile. Somebody there that needs your touch. Somebody there that needs your love. People are lonely. People are oppressed. And they want you to show that you are a disciple of Jesus. You are loving. A new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another. As I have loved you. That ye also love one another. Verse 35. By this shall all men know. That ye are my disciples. If ye have love one towards another. You are coming to the church. You see a brother, a sister stranded by the roadside. There's so much room in your car. You know them. They are coming to the same church. As you see them, if you are the one that has hidden love, Love that is never coming into expression. You roll up your windows. You put on the speed. You zoom on. And when that's brass one, so that before they know you are so and so, you are gone. And then after the service. You know, brother, we saw you. We were waving. Is that so? God bless you. But you came eventually. Yes, we missed uh, the scripture. And we missed the first part of the service. But we came eventually. Praise the Lord, I love you. You may not say that, Lord, but I love you very much. Other people, the love they have, as they see them on the road like that, they will not roll up their glass. They will not speed up. They will slow down. They will wave at them. Thank you, brother. Good morning, sister. Um, hurry up and meet us. Emma Bawakalo. I'll see you in church. How about the space in your car? From this day, your love will be practical. Other areas of life, let us show love. You know, sometimes there are people that misunderstand holiness. And I see their interpretation of holiness. And I've been trying to tell them, my brother, this one is not holiness, but they are not listening. I will tell you, his sister is going on the way. And then she missed her step. And a car passed by and bruised her leg. And a brother is passing by. Even if he's not a deeper life member. But you even know that that is sister so and so, a deeper life member. Her feet had been wounded. You can see the blood there. And she has fallen to the ground. We need somebody to take her up and bring her in a car, take her to the hospital. I am a brother. I am holy. I will not touch a woman. Another car is coming. 
another car can run over this sister. Sister, sorry. The Lord will take care of you. Are you feeling pain? Brother, help me. Drag me out of this place. Holiness. Holiness. Sister, I cannot touch you. If I touch you to drag you out of the road, I will lose my sanctification. I didn't teach you that holiness. So. It's another person that taught you that one. Lift her up. Take her out of that place. Take care of the people that are suffering. Holiness does not contradict love. Love does not contradict holiness. Somebody is hungry. She's dying of hunger. She's living in this apartment. You are living in that other apartment. She doesn't have anything to eat. You are throwing away food. Brother, this person is dying of hunger. Can't you give her food? We are holy. If I'm going to give her food at all, I will pass all the food. Although we are living next door to each other, I will not give her. I'm a man. She's a woman. She's not an old woman. She's a lady. I will pass all that food. I will bring it to the church. I will write her name. Sister so and so. I will not give anybody, give or shall give pastor, I will put it somewhere there. Somebody passing will see a pastor. They will see her name. They will pick it up. They will make announcement. Ah, she doesn't hear announcement. She doesn't have money to come to church to hear announcement. Your food will be rotting before she knows that there's any parcel for her. Feed the hungry. Care for those who are perishing. Let your love be practical. The new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one for another. You have ears to hear? I said you have ears to hear? Have you heard? Will you do it? Love one another. Take care of each other. Help each other to get to heaven. You will get there. She will get there. He will get there. Every one of us will get there in Jesus' name. Point number three. The model of a trustworthy disciple. The model of a trustworthy disciple. Jesus is our model. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 11. We're reading from verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today, God will give you rest. Christ will give you rest. All the hypertension and all the up and down, Jesus will touch you. He will remove everything. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your soul. Hypertension is over. Blood pressure is over. 
Worry and anxiety is all over. As you follow Christ, it will supply all your needs. As you follow Christ, all those things you have been praying for, he will accomplish everything. He will bless you. He will multiply his blessing upon you. And then you will share the blessing in your life will flow into other people in Jesus' name. For my yoke is easy. The Christian life will no more be difficult for you. Your road will not be rough anymore. The burden will not be heavy anymore. The Lord will take hold of your hand. He will lead you on. When the winds blow contrary, he will say your life, peace be still. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. Follow Christ. Live like Christ. Ask yourself every time. If Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, were in this condition, facing this condition, what would Jesus do? First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Here he tells us, For even here unto what he called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. What will Jesus do? Live like Christ. First John chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Even as Christ walked, walk like that. First John chapter 3 verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. He wants you to live like him. Jesus is the model of our lives. First John chapter 4 verse 17. Here in his are not made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. And if you follow him in this life, he will bless you. In the life to come, he will bless you. You will never miss any blessing in your life in Jesus' name. In um, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse 29 and verse 30. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel's sake, but he shall receive a hundredfold in this time. He wants you to be a follower, a loyal follower, faithful follower, and he says everything you left behind, because you are following him, because you are a disciple, one hundredfold it will multiply and bring over in your life. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. All this things shall be added unto you. I see the blessing of God coming upon you. I said, I see the blessing of God coming upon you. I will be a disciple of Christ. I will be a disciple of Christ. I must be a disciple of Christ. Where are you? Nothing will stop you. Nothing will drive you back. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though my friends oppose and enemies oppose, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Jesus is preparing another kingdom. And I will be there. No turning back, no turning back. Rise up, open your mouth and tell the Lord. You will not turn back. You will not turn back. You will follow the Lord. And the blessings of the Lord will keep on multiplying in your life. 